Hey guys, Chad Hoover. In today's video, I'm talking about frog fishing. One of the top questions I get is, Chad, do you like to fish your frogs slow or do you like to fish your frogs fast? And the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> All right, so let me explain. One of the top questions that I get asked because I'm a frog fishing fanatic is, what's your favorite frog? And the real answer to that question is I don't have a favorite frog. My favorite frog is the one that I'm catching them on at that time. I use a, a lot of different types of frogs, uh, whether it's the top toad, the spro frogs, uh, booyah pad crashers, a big fan of the strike king frogs. Um, it really depends on the conditions that I'm fishing at the time which frog I select. Now, I'm going to do another video called Selecting the Proper Frog, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about how to fish a frog, when to fish a frog, where to fish a frog, and why to fish a frog. So let's talk about that. So this is your standard hollow body frog, okay? Uh, I've done videos in the past where I talk about how I determine the length of the legs, and I like to have the length of the legs be the length of the body, because that's a little bit more anatomically correct for the type of fishing, or for the type of frog, uh, and it gives it the best possible action. If the legs are too long, it gets rid of the side-to-side -side sweep. If the legs are too short, it over-exaggerates it, and it doesn't give it enough action, and it doesn't make the frog sit nose up uh, in the water. So I like the length of the legs to be the same length as the body of the frog. Just a good little rule of thumb. Most manufacturers make them a little too long in my opinion, so again, I flip them over, I trim them off, make them even with the nose. That's my little method. You find out what works for you, but that works really well for me. So hollow body frogs, they come in a couple of different styles. I'm gonna talk about the two primary versions. Now, I'm a big fan of adding a little scent to my frog, so I like to keep mine in this watertight box. The reason I like to keep them in the watertight box is if it falls over the side, I don't have to worry about it sinking. It keeps my frogs from rusting, and then all I gotta do is shake up my Cox juice, uh, my JB's fish sauce or whatever, sprinkle it on there and they're kind of marinating in that juice. That way when that bass grabs it, it gives me that little extra half second or second to set the hook. So let's talk about the two different types. The two primary types are your pointed nose or what I like to call a faster moving frog style and then your cup mouth, uh, your popper style. So let's talk about those two. You know, it's late spring and uh, we're going to be transitioning, I'm sorry, it's early spring, but it's been a late winter. So we're going to transition to summer pretty fast. The so water temperatures are coming up, and I've already caught a couple fish on frogs this year. Uh, so here's what the deal is. With these pointed nose, right, these skinnier frogs, the ones that have the pointed nose on them, I use those for fishing fast. And when I'm fishing those fast, what I mean is I am going to, you're not going to see it, but I'm going to cast the frog out, and I'm going to be twitch reel, twitch reel, twitch reel, and I'm going to be walking it at a pretty fast cadence. That's going to have that frog coming across those pads real fast. There's two conditions that I choose to fish a frog fast like that. One, I like to fish it fast in heavily pressured waters because most people, in my opinion, don't fish a frog fast enough. I like to fish it anytime the cover is scattered. So if I've got pockets of lily pads in open water, pockets of lily pads in open water, pockets of grass in open water, wood laydowns with broken up where there's clear water in the middle, where there's open spaces. Think about it like this. I like to do the whole be the frog thing. And if I was a frog and I was swimming from a patch of lily pads across open water to another patch of lily pads, I'd want to get the hell over there as fast as I could because I'd feel vulnerable out there in that open water to get mauled you know, by death from below. So I'm going to move as fast as I can. The other reason I like this style is because I can either fish it directly tied to braid like I've got here or if I want to fish it a little slower and have it swing and kind of walk the dog where it's still moving fast but it stays in the strike zone and it's got a little side swipe where it doesn't make it easy for them to see that this frog is a fraud, you know, that it's an imitation, um, then I'll go to a mono leader, 20 to 25 pounds, I'll tie a loop knot a lot like you do for a topwater and I'll have that frog walk the dog. The way that you accomplish that is you cast your frog out. You want to hold your rod tip vertical and you want to snatch and give, snatch, give, reel, snatch, give, reel. So you twitch, you give it some slack, reel up your slack. Twitch, give it some slack, reel up your slack. So twitch, give, reel, twitch, give, reel. And that frog is going to walk the dog across the surface. That's kind of like as I'm coming into a feeding time and as I'm coming out of a feeding time, but I want to fish this faster style frog. That allows me to take a fast frog and fish it a little slower. The main reason that I fish 
any other style frog. I like to fish frogs fast uh, as much as I can, but if I'm gonna go to these, these popper mouth style frogs, uh, these ones that spit, and these ones that when you pull them, they spit water, and then you pause them, that twitch, twitch, pause, is two situations where I use them more than anything else. If I'm fishing off peak where the fish aren't that aggressive and I want the frog to stay in the strike zone longer, then I'm gonna slow it way down. If I'm fishing cooler or colder water and I'm gonna slow way down, then I'm gonna fish this popper style frog. If I'm fishing under docks where I'm gonna skip it up under there, I wanna ploop, ploop, and then let it sit, then I'm gonna fish these popper style spitting frogs. The other time that I'm gonna fish these frogs more so than the other type is when I'm fishing uh, cover that isn't broken. So if you've got a solid mat of hydrilla, if you've got a solid mat uh, of or a solid surface covered with lily pads, um, if you've got pretty much um, no breaks, then I'm gonna fish this type of frog because I wanna pop it and let it sit, pop, pop and let it sit. And I wanna let it stay in the strike zone to give that bass longer to decide that it's gonna blow up through that mat and eat that bait. If it's fast moving and they see it going across the mat and it looks like it's, get, it's already gotten away, they're gonna give up on it. So I have a lot more success in colder water, a lot more success under docks, and a lot more success during my off-peak periods, my, my time between my major feeding times by using a frog that I pop, pop, pause, pop, pop, pause, or pop, pause, pop, pause, than I do one of the faster moving frogs. So if you're choosing a frog, and you heard the beginning of the video when you say, do I fish it fast or do I fish it slow? And I was kind of a smart aleck and said, yes, that's why. I actually do fish a frog fast. I do fish a frog slow. I just fish it the way that it needs to be fished at the time. So pointed nose, faster moving frog like this one here. Fish that on broken water when you're going to be moving it faster, uh, when the mat is not solid, when there's gaps, or when you're in your primary feeding times. When the bite slows down, switch to your popper style. Uh, if you're fishing colder water, if you're fishing in and around docks or skipping it up under floating docks, I'm a big fan of the popping mouth style. I really do like these hybrid style where it's a little bit of both. Um, this is uh, from Strike King and it's even got the, the it's kind of a popping shad instead of a frog, uh, but it's got the legs oriented to where it's gonna walk a little better. Uh, what's also cool about this thing is, is it's a little harder right out of the package and so it's a little more durable, but if you boil it, uh, in on the stove for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'm sorry, put it in hot water. If you're gonna put it in boiling water, it's about 15 or 20 seconds. But if you put it in, you know, kind of water that's just below the boiling point, put it in there for about 15 minutes, it really softens that body up, gives you a better hookup ratio, um, and just takes that bait, dials it in and makes it, you know, pretty close to perfect. The other thing that I like about these style baits is they've got a weighted keel, uh, a little bit heavier than most of the weighted keels lets it sit up a little bit in the water column. And when you walk it, it walks a little better. When that lip catches, it spits. Um, and it's just a little bit better frog uh, for that type of fishing. One of the things I also like about this, these type of hollow bodies is if you want to get a long cast and if you want to make that bait bulge, simply stick it down in the water and press on it a little bit, kind of like you do with a squeaky toy or a toy in the bathtub when you're a kid and let it draw in a little water. That's going to make it heavier. That's going to make it cast further and it's also going to have it set in a little nose up, which makes it bulge more water, which is going to get more attention, but it also orients those hooks so that when that bass grabs it, they get hooked right in the top of the lip. So guys, that's it. Do I fish a frog fast or do I fish a frog slow? <laughs> the answer to that question is yes. And this video is naturally going to make you ask the question, what rod, reel, and line do I use? So I talked about that a little bit. Let's jump right into that and do a two for one on this video where not only am I telling you how to fish a frog, where, when, and why, but I'm gonna tell you what to fish a frog with. This is my All Pro rod. This is my company, so I'll tell you that up front. And this rod is my baby. This is the frog rod uh, that I designed. It is a seven foot heavy, uh, and it's a moderate fast. Now, one of the things that we've done with All Pro rods is we use this LPA concept. It's link, power, action, makes it easier for you to determine what that is, and on some of our specialty rods, like we've done on this one, we actually have frog written on it. Now, this is a frog rod, but it's also a great, um, you know, two ounce or less swim bait rod. It's a great multi lure rig rod. It's a good oversized spinner bait rod. It's a lot of other things, but it's primarily designed for frog fishing. Now, when I'm fishing in a kayak, I don't want a super long handle so that when I cast, the handle hits my PFD. So we shorten the handle just a little bit. 
but we didn't shorten the handle and not balance the rod. That rod, if you look at it, is almost perfectly balanced just forward of the handle. I'm using a Lose high capacity 8.3 to 1 reel uh, and 30 pound cans and braid from Seaguar. Now, I talked about in this video that sometimes I use a mono leader. I very seldom use a fluorocarbon leader. Every now and then I'll throw a fluorocarbon leader on there where I want to make the, the line sink and when I jerk the frog it kind of bloops under and reaches back to the surface. But that's not that common. That's only when I'm really trying to get down below the pads, get the fish to see it from a distance in clear water, or if I'm night fishing in certain situations where I really want to get that guttural, you know, bloop. And so sometimes I'll use fluorocarbon. By and large, straight braid, 30 to 60 pound. Um, in a lot of cases, I'm going to use mono leader. Again, if I'm fishing it slower and that line's going to lay on the water, I don't want the braid to sink or get caught on the vegetation. So I'll go to a three to you know, five, sometimes six foot um, mono leader, and that is pretty much it. So I'm going to keep it simple. I use this, um, this loose reel, high capacity um, spool. I'm using an eight three to one gear ratio. Again, I like to burn it. I like to take up line. If that fish blows up, I want to drop my rod tip, reel down, catch up the slack, boom. And then as the fish is coming to me and I'm going to it, the kayak and the fish are converging, I really want to be able to keep up with it. Years and years and years, I thought you had to use a slower gear ratio uh, for fishing frogs, for fishing in thick vegetation. You needed to, that trade-off of that torque instead of the speed. With a longer rod, with braided line with no stretch, I've really changed my mind on that. I'm a big fan of a high speed gear ratio. I like these wind grips on this loose reel. Uh, I like the split grip, lightweight rod, balanced. Uh, this foot rod is 7.8. I can cast a frog a country mile. In fact, the only reason that I've got um, 30 pound braid on this thing instead of 60 pound is I cast it to the knot on pretty much every call, uh, cast, even with a hollow body frog. So the 30 pound Kansan gives me a little bit more um, uh, line capacity because of the, the smaller diameter. Uh, I still have plenty of strength. I set the hook, the longer rod gives me more line take up. Uh, I do drop down to a seven foot uh, or a seven foot three if I'm fishing the frog around docks, but if I'm fishing open water, lily pads, open wood, anywhere I can get away with the longer rod, I'm using the longer rod because it's gonna give me longer casting distance, it's gonna give me more line take up when I set the hook, and it's gonna give me more leverage when I hook up that big fish that wants to jump and shake that thing that you just pinned to its face. So guys, that's the All Pro Rods Frog Rod. I'm Chad Hoover, hope you liked this video. Leave me a question in the comment section below. Smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the content that I put out today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on that notifications bell so you get a notification each and every time I release a new video. And uh, I appreciate it. Now y'all get out there and uh, snatch some toads with a frog.